Grain to glass is all about the journey of a beer and what goes into making the product from start to finish. Our first stop is the Miller Coors Grain Elevator. It may seem like we're going to the middle of nowhere, but it's really the middle of somewhere. And it's, it's a big deal to these local communities. It really is. Miller Coors is a multinational company with a major presence in the state of Montana. They sign millions of dollars worth of contracts every year with our grain growers. We do these tours to inform policymakers about the importance of the beer industry and everything that goes into it. The beer distributors are the forgotten cousin of the ag industry. There's a definite lack of understanding of how beer distributors work and how beer distributors are responsible for creating the demand for all of these local beers. Our mission has changed, as you'll see in this film. Our job is to get these beers to market. And we represent all sorts of different Montana breweries. Without the beer distributors, we would not get that beer from Harlowton to Sydney, from Harlowton to Missoula, and folks would not get the chance to enjoy this Montana-made product without the Montana beer and wine distributors. From day one, we've always used our wholesale partners for distribution, and I think that's a very large reason um, of, our, of our success in the state of Montana and throughout the western United States. A small brewer, they do have the option in the state of Montana to stay in a localized market, but they have to self-distribute. If they want to get outside that localized market, they have to use distributors as their resources in order to do so. We started out, we would distribute our beer out of the back of a Suburban, packing the beer up and down stairs. It is a very hard working industry. Cases are heavy, kegs weigh 160 pounds, kegs weigh as much as I weigh, right? We had some pretty fun hauls of kegs down steep staircases and, you know, luckily nobody ever got hurt. We knew that self-distribution was only going to be a phase for us because we learned that if we put a beer in a can and get it out to where people are drinking it, our whole worldview changes. Once we discover that the consumer demand is there for the beer, it's at that point in time that they typically make the move to uh, put it in cans or bottles. When that happens, that's where the full horsepower of a distributor kicks in. They start to see exponential growth, and that's when the training wheels come off and things really start rocking. Uh, our growth because of our relationship with our distributor, absolutely exploded. We're, we're not equipped to deliver beer. We're, that was never the intent. We make beer. Focus on beer, we're focused on what we're good at, and let, let our wholesalers focus on what they're good at, and that's getting beer to market. And it really makes me more comfortable and where I can concentrate on what's going on here at the brewery and not, not out in the marketplace. I think it's vital for small, small breweries to succeed with a distributor because the distributor comes in and they really are passionate about what they're doing and they help get a slot for those small microbreweries and make sure that they're getting to market and being able to sell their beer. Well, it's definitely a partnership. The distributors are very helpful with, um, for us with category management and they help us analyze what is working, what's not working, getting new items in, making sure that we're local, um, that we have the best selection. You know, I would say here in Montana, everything's a bit more on a personal level. You know, I get to see the, my beer reps multiple times a week, the distributors. It's a great relationship, and that relationship really equates to better service and better follow through in the stores. It's, it's nice to be able to have that phone number for my distributor, give them a call morning, noon, or night, and let them know that if I need them, they'll be there, and it's, it's a great thing. And if the acknowledgement from a retailer is they want something, it shows up the next day. But we staff that seven days a week, you know, 365 days a year, Christmas, New Year's, Thanksgiving. If our merchandises are scheduled to work, they will, you know, go out there and do it. As anyone that lives in Montana knows, there's no such thing as a snow day. So we get the product, and they do a great job of getting it to us. Well, we had a really rough winter last year, and they were always here, and, and sometimes they were wet up to their knees, and and they were still here to bring the product. The store I started in uh, in 1995, we had five cooler doors of beer, and some of my stores right now have up to 19 cooler doors of beer. 10 years ago, we, we carried three feet of wine versus, you know, 30, 60 feet of wine, even more in some places. Well, when we started, I think there were six breweries in the state, and now there's 70. 
well, it's Montana. We like our beer and wine. <laughs> People like selection. They want to try the new thing. They want to they want to shop around. Back when my grandfather started the business, it was very easy to keep track of things. We only had a few different SKUs they had to manage. In in the 1950s in our business, you know, we we had like 20 SKUs in the house. Well, today we've got thousands of SKUs in the house. We know where every keg, can, and bottle is in the marketplace once it leaves our facility. And so beyond the delivery feature, we actually set the shelf up for sale. We price the goods for sale. We deal with returns. We, we concern ourselves with freshness. And beer and wine is way more perishable than one might think, and it really needs special care. It needs to be temperature controlled at all times, and even through delivery to stocking, so it's a really key element of our relationship. I can't stress in our business, the quality is the number one thing. We know that our wholesale partners are watching and are going to pull it off the shelf, so we always have the freshest beer available to our, our consumers. So that frees us up to concentrate on other, other aspects of the business, which is brewing, not, not driving trucks and packing kegs all through the towns. They're more than just truck drivers, they're more than just delivery people, they're really relationship builders uh, between us and the community out there of bars, restaurants and stores. We are not just trucks, we are personality and people and our goal is to carry the goodwill of the brewery and the, and the freshest profile and the styles of beer and the, and the various how these styles are served. If it was wide open market and there was no distributor and there were no rules saying to a retailer that you can't get everything bought and paid for by a brewer or a distiller or a winemaker, I would not be here because we don't have the resources to compete in that kind of a market. Pre-prohibition, the breweries owned the bars. They owned them lock, stock, and barrel. They owned the lock on the front door, they owned the stock behind the bar, and they owned the beer in the barrel and they were able to apply pressures to push people into only their beer. And it was a very unbalanced system. What I love about our distributor partners is that they'll say, we'll give everybody an equal chance to either fail or succeed. And that's why our system is so healthy. It's open to a startup. As much as it's open to myself at 22, 23 years, our brewery, our team, Having distributors as a partner in this business is fantastic. They really, they're our boots on the ground. They inform us a new product, they come in, we coordinate on displays, help drive sales, reset aisles, and really just make our beer selection the best selection we can have here in Missoula. It's our biggest selection is our Montana Craft. It rivals our domestic. It's really cool to see. It's such a growing segment. Everybody wants to support local now. You see more people, I think, at the farmer's markets than you have ever seen before. And the same thing goes with craft beer. We take great pride in watching those brands grow um, because it's home. It's Montana. We're putting money right back into the local economy. And, and there's, a, there's a great sense of pride that goes along with that. You know, where I came from, I didn't give it much credence until I got to Montana, and boy was I re-educated. It's, it's such a big segment of our business. And again, without these distributors in Montana, it'd be shocking to see maybe what breweries wouldn't be successful without them. When we look at you know, these small town brewers, I think what they're bringing back to a lot of these communities is some revitalization, some excitement. As they open up new brewery locations in Montana, not only are they just opening up a brewery, they're breathing life into some old buildings and revitalizing them and making them very much a part of the community again. It brings a sense of community to the people. It's kind of a gathering point where people can sit down, enjoy a beer, be here with their family. What I owe is back to the customer that they're gonna get a great tasting beer that they can be proud of because it's made in Montana out of Montana grains by Montana people. One of the things that I'm most proud of um, is having started a viable business in Montana that we, that we employ 40 families at, at, our, at our facility. You know, so while we employ 40, our wholesale partners are employing hundreds, if not thousands, in the state of Montana. The, the proliferation and growth of these Montana craft beers significantly contributes back to the local economy. Those dollars stay right here, and they are spent right back into the economy. And that's the beauty of this whole thing, is it's local industry. It's not only beer that's being sold in Montana and the lifting of the 10,000 barrel limit, 
Now these folks can export their product and put Montana on the map as a true beer producing state. Benjamin Franklin once said that beer is proof that God loves us and wants us to be happy. And I live my life by that every day. <laughs>